Mike writes, what if you are just starting out or starting your retirement plan at age 53? I make a decent income, and I do at least have emergency savings, but there isn't much beyond that. Is it too late for me? No, Mike, it's not. It is never too late. Now, it's possible that retirement may not be exactly what you have envisioned or dreamed for your lifetime that it will be because you're starting late, but it is never too late to improve upon your situation. You're absolutely right about that, Scott. And I think that, that the number one thing that you've got to think about is what do you need to get there? Let's, uh, you've got to do the work. You've got to do the math. And, and I understand that there is a psychological barrier to sitting down and dealing with this because you do think it's too late. But you need to, first of all, work with an advisor that's willing to work with you and tell you the truth about what the numbers look like. If you know the truth, then the truth will set you free. And so I think in, in Mike's case, you need to clearly understand what's before you and then make some decisions about, OK, well, maybe my retirement doesn't need to be at this level. Maybe it needs to be a little bit lower. Maybe I can do some adjustments. I need to think about the impact of Social Security and all of that type of thing. But I think the first thing that, that I would say to Mike is that you might want to consider a side gig. There's a lot of opportunity to set money aside on a pre-tax basis if you have a sideline income. Because in a number of things, Scott, we have done this for people that have retired and now are working as a consultant and they have set up defined benefit plans that they can throw a chunk of money into that will save them hundreds of thousands of dollars over the time in their retirement as far as taxes are concerned. But then there's things that are very easy like a, a SEP program that a side gig could fund for you and you can put a lot of money in an SEP program and help you to move forward. I think you also have to think about catch-up contributions. And also, I think that when you sit down with an advisor and have that conversation, Mike, the first thing that you need to really get a handle on is what income are you really going to need in retirement? Yeah. Because there's all these things of people in their mind, they think, oh, I want to retire, so I need this big income. You need to, first of all, think about what is your required income, and that's where we start here at GenWealth. Yeah, I think it's important. I would ask Mike, too, you know, what what has been the cause for you to be starting pretty much at ground zero at age 53? Was it, was it a divorce or a catastrophe of medical bills or something that derailed what you were previously doing? Or has it been that you haven't had or felt like you haven't had the income uh, or the margin between your income and expenses to put into those retirement dollars because those things need to get fixed first, right? We got to rearrange them th some things. Is it debt? Uh, do you have too much debt? We got to clear that out so that you can have that margin. But if, to John's point, if uh, if the decent income is there, like he says in his question there, uh, and there is some margin already available, there are great opportunities to start sending money into. Uh, retirement plans. And I would say, too, at age 53, you're really not that far behind. Honestly, you may have to talk about delaying your retirement, right? I mean, if, you're, if your idea was to retire at 62 or 65, and we can put a plan together that shows you that's probably going to be tight. But if we continue to, or if we start throwing money into retirement savings plans, get it invested, let give it a longer time period to grow uh, in market-related uh, investments, then maybe 70 is a, yeah. is is a good looking retirement, right? That's that's the process of planning. Is it may maybe not exactly what you wanted, but it can show you that it is in range. Absolutely, and Scott. I think there's two other pieces of advice that I would I would give Mike in this case. I think number one, I think you have to prioritize what's important to you. If legacy is something that you're interested in, meaning leaving some money to someone else and you're starting late, that legacy may have to wait. The legacy has to take a backseat to provision of your retirement income throughout your lifetime. And there are some financial products that can produce a higher income level to you in retirement if legacy is not important. So that might be something that you want to take a look at. Our job here is not to recommend a product to yep. you, Mike, but but that it, just having the awareness that that is out there helps you to understand what's going on there. Here's another one that's probably a, a pretty big swerve, but let's talk about it. You know, if you go to work somewhere at this stage of the game at age 53 that has a pension and pensions are fairly few and far between in the private sector. So it may be a government sector job that you're looking at, but pensions are paid out based on 
your salary and your age, not necessarily how much money you've put into the program. And so people that start in their 50s can have a pretty nice pension by the time they get to be 65 or 70 years old. Now there's some vesting and years of service and things of that nature that go into that, but that might be worth exploring that if there is an opportunity to go to work somewhere that has a pension, that could be a saving grace for somebody like Mike from Cabot who feels like he's starting late but needs to do the work that's necessary to know exactly where he is yeah because honestly we've talked about it many times on this show retirement is not an asset problem it is an income problem so if you can find a way to get guaranteed income sources in place like that if you can add a pension to your social security check that's going to help solve that income problem and the assets that you have the investable money uh, that you grow over time, that's going to be for discretionary income. So you think about needing guaranteed income to cover your required income uh, in retirement because you don't want the money you need to pay the bills and keep your uh, house afloat, keep your basic lifestyle going, subject to market volatility. What you do want is to be able to create an investment strategy for the discretionary income that gets stacked on top of your required income and grow it over time so that you can get raises in retirement. So wherever Mike is starting from, it's not too late to start layering in those pieces of his retirement income uh, and build a plan either at 53 or at 32, like we had a moment ago. That's right. It's always a great time to begin the planning process. Scott, let me take the opportunity to encourage Mike to go to our website, getreadyforthefuture.com forward slash steps, S-T-E-P-S. What you're going to find there, Mike, is you're going to find this document. This is a downloadable document, Securing Financial Independence, Seven Steps to Building Sustainable Life After Work. These steps are universal. It doesn't matter whether you're at 23, 33, 53. These steps are what you're shooting for in retirement. So if you go to GetReadyForTheFuture.com, forward slash steps, you're going to be able to download that document and you're going to understand some of the things that we've talked about here, like determining your monthly income need, maximizing your social security benefit, accounting for inflation, planning for health care, understanding and being aware of taxes, doing the math and minding the gap, all of these things in the context of creating a written plan. Uh, This is an absolutely free resource. Go to getreadyforthefuture.com forward slash steps, and we will email this document to you. And that goes for anybody listening, not just Mike. If you're wondering about the path to your retirement and how to get some clarity about your retirement, you're going to want this document in your hand because it's going to be your guide to doing what you need to do to secure financial independence. 